Hello and welcome to this session. I am Raghav and in this session we are going to learn step by step from scratch how to create and run SOAP API in REST Assured. We will also see how we can get a request body of the API from a file and then finally how we can get and validate our XML response. So let's get started and the first step here is we will create a class in our project. So I will go to my Eclipse and here is the project that we have been creating rest assured project i will expand this and here i will go to src test java folder and i will go to the tests folder and i can create a new file here so i will do a right click and say new and create a new class and i will name this as soap xml request and say finish so i have created a very simple class here i will press ctrl plus on my keyboard to increase the font and i hope now you can see it properly so i have just created a class as of now now step number two is i will create a function and then annotate that function with the at test annotation that is coming from test ng so i will go inside the class and say public void and I will say validate uh, soap xml and a start curly bracket and a end curly bracket so I have created a very simple function here and now I will annotate it with the annotation at test and this should come from test ng so if I hover over this I should be getting it from this org.testng.annotations and you can see this is now imported here so we are done with step number two step number three is we have to add the base uri which comes from rest assured library so i will say here inside the function i will say rest assured i can press ctrl spacebar on my keyboard for auto suggestion and i can say dot base uri so you can see i am also getting this auto suggestion box just in case you do not see this you can always press control and spacebar key combination or if you are on mac you can press command spacebar and you should get this so i will say base uri now in case you do not want it this way and you want a static import you can also do it as a static import so i can say here import static io dot rest assured dot rest assured dot and i will say base uri and now after i do this i do not need to provide the class rest assured here i can directly use base uri and this is what i have mentioned here as well if you static import the base uri you can directly use the base uri and here i need to give the base uri or the location of our soap api so for here let me show you an example of a SOAP API that I'm going to test here. I will go to Google and search for a sample SOAP web service for testing. In case you have your own web service, you can use that. And here I have a lot of web services. Let me check this. That is calculator web service. And here is the web service and it has all these requests we have add divide multiply subtract and if i go to add you can see this is the request for add and this is how we will get the response so this is our add api a soap api in the calculator web service uh, if i go here to the service description it will open the wstl of the web service and here is the wstl and just in case you want to parse and check the requests from the wstl you can get a chrome extension if you go to your chrome extensions or web store there is a extension called whistler and if you search for whistler here this is the extension and if you see on my chrome this is the it is added here so it is here whistler and it is used to browse wstl and it will become active only when you have a wstl 
on your browser so if i click this it will show me all the requests if i click on add it shows me the request for the add request or add api here so for now i will go back to the calculator web service and go to add and here uh, this is the uri i will just copy this uri from here and give it here so just copy and paste this uri here and then after this step number four is i will provide the headers and the body by using the given statement so i will say rest assured dot given and just in case i do not want to use the rest assured here i can go here in the import statement and i can do a static import for given i will say import static io dot rest assured rest assured dot given and now i do not need to provide this here i can directly say given and this is what i have mentioned here as well for static import of given you can use this so there is a correction it is not base uri it is given here and this is what you use here so after this i can say i can add the headers the content type and the body so i will say given dot and i will say content type and the content type i am giving to the server is text xml so you can see this is going to be a xml request that i am going to send to the server and then i can put it in a new line for easy readability and then i can say dot accept so what is the content type i want to accept so again i can say uh, text xml or i can also just mention here content type dot xml so i am saying that the content i am passing to the server is of xml type and i also want to accept a response of type xml and then i can give the body so i can say here body so this should be body here i will say body and now i have to give this body that is the request body of the add api now i can give it as a string here or a better way is i can actually put this in a file and then can refer the file here so this is what we are going to learn that is how to get request body from a file here step number one is I can create a file with XML extension and then put the request body there. So I will just go on my desktop. You can create at any location on your system. I will create a new text file and I will say this is add.xml and I will save this. So you can see I have just created a file called add.xml and let me open this in some editor i will open in notepad plus plus and i just have to add this request body i can just copy from here or i can also copy from here that i have got using the whistler extension so both will work i am going to copy this here and here instead of this int i can add some values let us say uh, two here and three so these are the two integers and in the response we will get the addition of these two integers so save this and now i have created this file and i have also copied the request body and saved the file and then i have to get the file in the code so for that i will go to my code and here at the top of this function i can write the code so i can use file input stream so i will say file input stream if i press control spacebar it should auto complete and should also import this from java.io and then i will say i can give any variable name i'm just saying file input stream you can give any variable name here and equals to new file input stream i will again press control spacebar for auto completion and here i have to give the location of the file so i can say here 
I can first get the file using the file class I will say file and the variable file equals new file and I have to give the uh, path of the file here so here I have to mention the path of this file name so I can either just copy the entire path of this file the entire location or a better way is I can put this within my project so even if I take my project to some other system the file goes along with me so I am going to my project folder do a right click and I will create a new folder I will say this is soap request and in this folder I will copy this file I can also drag and drop like this and I will say copy and you can see the file has come here within my Eclipse project and now I can also give a relative path so I can say here I can say dot and forward slash if you are on Windows you can also use double backslash but this will fail or this will break if you are on Mac or other system so it's better to give a forward slash which will work on Windows as well and I can give the folder name and I can do this because this folder is within the main project folder so this is the folder name soap request and the file name is add.xml and this file variable now I can use here and a colon so this is fine and then I should also get the request body as string and for that we can use the iOutils class that comes from the Apache Commons so this is coming from Apache Commons so just in case you do not have this you can first get this POM dependency so what I will do is I will go to my maven repository I will go to maven central or the maven repository and here I will search for Apache Commons and here this is coming this is the Apache Commons library I will get this and get the latest version and I'll just copy the POM dependency or the maven dependency from here that I can copy in my POM.xml so I will go to my POM.xml here and copy this and I can press Ctrl A and Ctrl I for formatting and then Ctrl S and this will download all the required libraries and now I can go back to my class and now I can say here I can say string request body or any variable name equals iOutils so I will say string request body this is just a variable request body you can use anything here equals to io utils now if I press control spacebar on my keyboard you can see now it is coming from Apache Commons and I will say this and then I will say to string and I will say here I will use this to string and here I will use the file input stream and this is the encoding so the general encoding we use is UTF-8 just in case your API is using something else you can use that and that's it and this is done so we have done this and then I can add also add a code to check the file so before that let me just copy this variable in the body here so now we are passing the body from the file and just to make sure that this file exists and I do not proceed forward uh, without making sure that this file actually exists I can also add a code here I can say if I'll say if file which is this variable and I will say dot exist or file dot exists then I will just print out I will say file exists so for print statement what I have done is I have just uh, typed SYSO 
and then I pressed control spacebar on my keyboard and this will auto complete the sysout statement or the print statement and then I in the brackets within the quotes I am saying file exists now in case it does not exist then in the else statement you can actually throw an exception uh, but for now I will keep it very simple so I have also added the code here so if file exists then we can print something and if it does not then we can throw some exception so we have done step number four where we have given the content type header and body and now step number five is we can now send our request as post so here I will say I will say here dot and then I will say when and again dot and then I will say post and here I have to give the endpoint so the endpoint here is if I go to my request again you can see here the endpoint here is this calculator.asmx I can copy from here or you can also see it here this is the endpoint calculator.asmx so I will add this here and then this will send our request and then we should be able to get the response so then step number six is we can add the expected conditions and we can also do the response validation so I can say here after this I will say dot and then I will say then control space bar for auto completing and then I can say here status code and what is my expected status code it should be 200 I can put this in a new line for easy readability and I can put a semicolon to stop the statement and there is some issue here if I go here it is asking me to add a throws declaration or surround with try catch so let me just add throws declaration here and it will add a throws declaration here so let me expand this and show you this is our complete class I will save this and I will do a right click run as test ng test and make sure the test ng option you will get only after you have added the test ng plugin in Eclipse and then have restarted your Eclipse we have learned this all in the earlier sessions so this is now running and yes you can see everything looks fine and it was all fine we are also getting file exist and it was a valid soap XML now uh, we can also add some more uh, features so just to log the response I can say dot log dot all so this will also show me the response in the console if I run it again let me check so yes now you can see it is also giving me the response and it is giving me the result as 5 so this is the add result which is 5 I hope this was very useful for you and you can do some hands-on along with this video if you have any issues any doubts you can let me know and I will try to answer you as soon as I can I will meet you in the next episode thank you for watching